Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie. I'm a book loving, notebook hoarding, reader and writer on a mission to change lives, one book and one notebook at a time. And this is the Get Literate Podcast. Each week, we mix together books, notebooks, mindful practices, and creativity to cultivate a life we love. You can expect regular weekly episodes focused on three books you need to know about on a bookish theme, and we'll bring those themes to life in our actual lives too. You can also expect author interviews, notebooking inspiration, and topics to help us grow through what we go through. Now, let's grab a notebook and your TBR list and let's get literate. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Get Literate podcast. We have really started off the podcast year with a bang. First, we had on Jules from The Literary Lifestyle who talked to us about all things Gilmore Girls. Then we had our first author conversation with Terry Brown, author of An Enemy Like Me, later in the week. I heard from many of you that you really enjoyed these special guests, and I can't wait to bring you more episodes like that in the coming year. But today, we are going to take a left turn. We have talked so much about our reading lives lately that I feel like it's time to dedicate an episode to our writing lives. And if you haven't figured out yet, from the podcast or from my blog or just following on me on social media. I love notebooks. I adore them. Big ones, small ones, spiral bound, perma bound, soft cover, hard cover, lined, unlined, dotted, blank pages, decorative pages, guided pages, plain pages. I love all the things. And I always have a stack of notebooks with me pretty much at any given time, whether it's on my desk, in my bag, or even in my purse. I'm often asked all about my notebooks. How many of them do you have? What kind do you like to use? What do you actually use them for? How do you keep track of them? How do you manage them? So I thought it was about time that I created an episode all about my notebooking, and specifically, I'm going to share with you what my 2023 notebook stack looks like. So first things first, how many notebooks do I have in 2023? Well, as of right now, eight. I have eight different notebooks that I use. Yes, I use all of them. No, I don't use all of them every day. And yes, I need them all. Although there are alternatives that we can talk about if you don't like the idea of having so many notebooks, but I do. Honestly, the more the better. But I will say I wasn't always this way. I was more of a functional notebooker. So I remember the distinct moment that all changed, though. I was in college studying to be a teacher. I was sitting in one of my classes with my plain notebook and my plain planner, probably from the dollar store or the cheapest thing I could get my hands on. And I happened to look in the aisle next to me, a little bit up a ways to another student. And she had the most beautiful, colorful planner, what I now know to be likely as a happy planner. She had the happy planner, the coordinating colorful notebooks, the folders, the pencil pouch with a really cute pouch and little pom-poms on the zipper. And everything just looked so beautiful. And honestly, at first, I remember looking and going, oh my gosh, how do you have the money to spend on all of that? Where, where does she get her time even just to find that? Why does anyone even need that much bling on their notebooks? But I quickly realized that my scoffing at what she had was actually lots of envy and lots of jealousy because I always put function over enjoyment. And it was that day, actually, after class, I went out and bought myself a much prettier notebook and was so surprised at how much better it made me feel every time I opened it, even if I was stuck taking notes in a class. So that moment kind of changed the game for me. And I just decided from that moment forward that I get to indulge. 
I can have notebooks. I can splurge on the pretty planners. I can get the pencil pouch with all of the markers and all of the things. Everywhere else in my life, I am pretty much a penny pincher. But when it comes to my books and my notebooks, new, new ball game there. So I love having different notebooks for different reasons, different notebooks for different aspects of my life that are important to me right? You might want just one and you keep everything going on in your life in one notebook and maybe you just color code the notebook or tab it in different ways, but that is not me. I, I literally want them all. <laughs> and I do. I have eight. So I'm going to share with you today my 2023 notebook stack. I'm going to tell you what each one is, what I do with it, and the kind of notebook it is. Maybe you'll have the same kind of notebook like I do. Maybe you won't yet, but here they are in no particular order. First up is my morning pages notebook. Now, this is a notebook that is about six by nine. It is leather bound and the inserts actually change as I fill the notebooks up. So the cover is always the same. I always know that this one is my morning pages notebook. I need to hide at all costs and find the perfect refill for. Now, admittedly, I've tried morning pages off and on for years, but it wasn't a habit that actually started to stick until 2022. I have been struggling this year with some health challenges. I was feeling frustrated and miserable and in pain lots of the time. And it was suggested to me that I take a look at Julia Cameron's work, specifically The Artist's Way. It was a 12-week program to kind of unblock yourself from your creativity and see what could happen. I had nothing to lose at this point, so I thought, hey, why not? I will go all in. And one of the things Julia requires in her artist's transformation is the use of <clears throat> morning pages. Now, these morning pages are pretty simple. You get up in the morning, the very first thing you do, or second for me, I do get that cup of coffee, the very first thing you do is to open up your notebook and write for three consecutive pages straight without stopping. And you might be thinking, well, what do you write about? Anything. The negative things on your mind, the things that happened the day before, the dreams you have, things you wish you said to someone, Anything goes. She gives lots of suggestions in her book, but the morning pages are pretty much a daily practice that is designed to help you get whatever is on your mind and heart out onto the page so that you can make sense of it and that you can start to make forward plans for your life based on what you're learning about yourself. Now, I am 10 weeks in. I only missed one day because I was sick and I will not go back. I am definitely addicted to this morning pages practice. I will say though, I do use a six by nine notebook. So those pages are a little bit smaller than a traditional notebook, but I don't think it's cheating because I still do my pages and I still just show up so that I can feel what's going on and, and get it all out on the page. It did take me a while to see the benefits. It really wasn't until week six that I started to think, is this doing anything? Am I learning anything? And then it's like a little magic switch goes off and all of a sudden you get how important those morning pages are. So this notebook, even though I said they're in no particular order, I did start with this one because I start my day with this one. And this is one that I will write in every day without fail unless something comes up because I really have seen how powerful it can be. So that's my first notebook in my stack. It's my first notebook of the day. And that is my morning pages notebook. Now, my second notebook that I write in daily is what I just call my professional notebook, my work notebook. Basically, it's a notebook where I keep track of all of my meeting notes, my work ideas, my projects, my podcast episodes, ideas for blogs, all sorts of things that are related to work instead of home. Now, this one is actually a notebook that I scored from the dollar store. It was $3 and it is probably my most favorite notebook that I've had. 
it has this beautiful gold coil. The lines are there, but they're light. And there's one half line at the top to put the date. It has a beautiful pink, yellow, gray plaid cover, which is the colors of my blog theme. And the way that the pencil feels when it glides across this paper is just so smooth. I went and bought the dollar store out of them after I started writing in it. And I'm getting worried because I am on my last notebook and I can't find it. I can't find it in the store. I can't find it online. I am going to put a picture of my notebook stack in the show notes. So if you happen to see this notebook somewhere, maybe you can send me an instant message and let me know where so I can go grab them before this one runs out. Now, I do keep some digital notes as well, right? I am a Google Doc user, just like the rest of the world, but I do love having my notes in one place that I can flip through the pages. I know I can't search the Google Doc and find something quickly, but I do like going back through the pages because it reminds me of those ideas I had that maybe I put down on paper and I forgot about. So that is my professional notebook or my work notebook from the dollar store. It is a regular letter size, eight and a half by 11 notebook so that I have all the space I need for my ideas. Now, book three, is actually my newest book that I've added to the stack and the one that I am so excited about because I made it. And that is my book journal. I've always kept track of the books that I've read in varying ways, whether it was just a list on a piece of paper, it was a page of one of my notebooks. And then lately I've moved, of course, as you know, to Goodreads and my bookish spreadsheet and now with the podcast, with really wanting to make books a bigger part of my life, I knew I needed a book journal. I wanted a place to keep track of what my reviews were, how the book impacted me, the quotes I loved, the ways that it brought me to my notebook, all of the things. And I couldn't find the book journal that had all of those things that I loved. So I made one. I use it every time I finish a book so that I can keep that book close to mind and I have what I need to talk about it on the podcast too. So if you're up for a book journal and you haven't seen mine yet, head to alitlife.com, click on the book journal link and you'll be able to see all of the pages and even a quick video tour to see if you might want to add this book journal to your yearly notebook stack. Okay, so that was one, two, and three. Moving on to number four is my quote journal. Now, I've collected quotes for a long, long time, as long as I can remember. I didn't always have a centralized place for them, though. I was the gal who had lots of quotes on sticky notes. They'd be stuck to my laptop, to my mirror, to my wall, to my bulletin board, to my notebook, to my, my car dashboard. They were everywhere. Later, I shifted to try to collect them somehow. I've tried Google Docs. I have tried a Padlet wall. I have tried a really small notebook with one quote a page, but they didn't really, they didn't always work for me. So I've settled into a small A5 notebook. I always go for one with a really beautiful decorative cover. I want it to be a little bit harder. I want it to be a little glossy so that if I throw it in my purse or my bag, it's not going to get damaged. But this quote journal really is a collection of quotes from the books that I'm reading, right? Sometimes I put them in my book journal. Sometimes I want them in my quote journal. It's also lots of quotes that I've heard from the podcasts that I've been listening to or the ones that I see on social media. And I'm really leaning into how important mantras and affirmations are especially with my work with Julia Cameron and the morning pages. So this notebook collects those affirmations that I want to keep close to my heart. And why am I doing it this way instead of a Google Doc where I might be able to find them easier or have an endless supply of them? Because I want to be able to see them. I like thinking of a quote and then needing to search through my notebook to find it rather than knowing exactly what it is because then I see all of those other quotes that mattered to me too. So I purposely use a notebook and I purposely do not use a table of contents. I just randomly throw them in there so that I have to do some browsing and then I can 
flip through these often, more often than I would if it were in a Google Doc or in some other digital space. So I love this notebook. I've had one for a while, as I mentioned, but I'm really leaning into it for the mantras and the affirmations in 2023. Now, notebook five is a planner. So it's not actually a notebook, but it's an agenda. It's a planner. Um, I use my Google Docs calendar for everything. That's where I have my meetings. It's where I block in my project time. All of my kids' events are on there. So I do use my Google calendar to keep track of my life. But I do use an old school paper, pencil, planner for my podcasts, my blog posts, and my fun projects. I have no idea why I don't just put them all on the same calendar, other than I just like to see the notebook. I just like to be able to write in it. And since it's a book podcast and a notebook podcast, I think it's pretty fitting that the way I plan it is old school pencil paper too. So which planner do I use? This one is Emily Lay's Simplified Planner. I love it. It's about an A5 size. It's simplistic. It's minimalistic, but it's colorful and bright and clean. And there are these little quotes throughout that kind of just affirm what you're doing. And there are these little suggestions of how to simplify your own life throughout the pages of the month. So I love it. It's nothing too fancy, but it gets the job done and it's pretty to look at. So that's my planner for my podcast and for all of my fun professional projects that I have going on. Now, moving to number six, number six is my writer's notebook. And this is a yellow hardcover moleskin notebook. Do you see how my obsession with notebook isn't just one kind of obsession? I want different notebooks for different reasons. And those are not just different topics, but I want the different shapes, the different sizes, the different hardcovers. I heard not too long ago that when Taylor Swift writes songs, she chooses pens to write those lyrics with based on the way the songs are making her feel. And that's kind of how I feel about my notebooks. I have different kinds of notebooks for different kinds of things and how I want them to make me feel as I'm writing in them. And so I chose a moleskin notebook for my writer's notebook because it just feels really, really writerly. There was a book, um, I'm of course forgetting the title right now as we're recording the podcast, but my son and I read it together. Oh, it was called Peak, P-E-A-K. And it was about this This teenager who was literally climbing to the top of Mount Everest and the gift, one of the gifts he gifted himself that really kind of saved his sanity on the way was a moleskin notebook. And he ended up doing a great deal of writing in it for a teacher back home. And I just remember thinking moleskin makes me feel like a writer. So my moleskin notebook is my kind of my writing dream notebook. But I don't tend to go there to write. When I write something, whether it's nonfiction or it's I'm attempting a work of fiction, I'm doing that live on Google Docs. There really isn't any outlining or drafting. I just head to the computer and I start typing. But my writer's notebook is where I put all those ideas. I do have lots of ideas for new books and kids books and blogs posts. And Rather than write them out, I just put those snippets there. And I often do a lot of sketch noting in there, which is a combination of writing and text with images and colors and different symbols to indicate importance. And I just have a little bit of fun there to see where those projects might go and try out some of the craft moves that I might actually want to bring into that project. It's kind of a scary thought to put your words out there to the world, but I feel like my moleskin notebook gives me the courage to try them out there before I actually head to the computer or a public place to see what others think. So that is my sixth notebook, my moleskin writer's notebook. Okay, we're getting there. Number seven, number seven is my five-year journal. This one might be my favorite 
It really, really might. I thought for a long time, it's just, it's too late for a five-year journal. I should have started the five-year journal when the kids were little, when we were doing all these really fun, amazing things. And we were together all the time. That's when I should have been tracking the good things every day in a journal. But I finally realized how ridiculous that sounded, right? It is never too late to start documenting the good things in your life. Never. And this journal really is a game changer to help you change your perspective. Every night I go to my five-year journal or maybe the next morning if it was a busy night, but every day I go to my five-year journal, I turn to the correct page and I write in colorful markers. This notebook is a very colorful notebook. It's very small. I don't know the dimensions. I want to say maybe four inches by eight inches. It's a big, fat, chunky, colorful book. And every day I turn to the right page. I write in the year. And with one of my colorful markers, I write one good thing from the day that I want to hold on to. And I am so excited to say that I have been at this for just about a year. I started this notebook January 15th of 2022. And we're just about there, at least at the time of recording. So I put things that I don't want to forget. They're usually the little things that just, you know, slip your memory. One one might be the time where my daughter treated me to Starbucks. Another day might remind me of the fun we had at the farmer's market. Or maybe another day is just a funny thing that the kids said. I love going back on it, even just one year later to see all of the entries. And I can't imagine the joy it'll bring when it is all the way full at the five-year mark. So if you haven't done a five-year journal, it's not too late. It can be any good thing from your day about you, your kids, your family, your friends, the people around you, good things that you hear going on in the world, or even just one thing you did that day that you want to remember. It's definitely a journal that has enriched my notebooking experience and has just enriched the view that I have at the end of the day when I think back on it. I don't want to remember the negative stuff. I want to remember the good stuff. And when you continually train your brain to do that once a day, it gets easier and your whole perspective shifts. So that is my very small, chunky, colorful five-year journal from Chronicle Books. Okay, we are coming up on number eight, and this is my very tiny traveler's notebook. Got a couple of them. I alternate which ones I use. I've got one that has a nice traveler's notebook cover. I've got another one that is just a very simple craft, kind of brown paper bag color. But basically, this little traveler's notebook travels with me. Right. So I don't use a traveler's notebook in the traditional sense. When I say I'm using my notebook that travels with me, it's to capture all of those things that I don't want to forget. My to do lists, the things I need at the grocery store, the things I don't want to forget that I have to do or I want to do. Maybe it's planning. Maybe there's um, notes or things that cross my mind when I'm, I'm waiting in a doctor's office or waiting to pick up the kids. It's kind of a holding notebook so that I just don't forget things and then I can do something with it later when I get home. Now, a typical traveler's notebook, if you were to go onto Google and look up some really wonderful traveler's notebooks, those are often memory keeping notebooks where you literally jot down what you're doing as you're traveling. I haven't done one of those yet. I will, I'm gonna try that this year in 2023. But for now, this is just a mini notebook, but it's the traveler's notebook size, which is usually longer and thinner and just tucks nicely into a purse or a bag. So that is my my little small purse notebook. Now I've shared all eight in my stack, but I I have to admit, I have one more that's on deck. (laughs) Just one. Well, maybe, maybe more, but just one for now. And that is my challenge notebook. So if you listened to a couple of episodes ago, I talked about a challenge, a notebooking, journaling, clarity challenge that I did for the entire month of December based on Alex Benayan's three questions. So every day of December, at the end of the day, 
I asked myself and I answered three questions in a separate small notebook. What brought me enthusiasm today? What drained me of energy today? And what did I learn about myself today? That journaling challenge was impressive. I was shocked at the things, the patterns, the ideas, the concepts that I uncovered about myself at the end of December, which really helped me go into this new year in a much different frame of mind, right? I didn't make any of those typical resolutions to lose five pounds and go to the gym every day. I made resolutions based on what I learned about myself in the month of December through that challenge. And that feels much better. So I have a notebook on deck, ready for the next time I do the challenge. I do think about those questions often and I write about them in my morning pages, but it is my plan to complete that 30-day challenge again in April, which is my birthday month. I figured that's a really great time for reflection. And then again at the end of the year in December so that I can start off 2024 the right way as well. So I've got a notebook all ready to go. It's already labeled my clarity challenge and it is sitting there ready to remind myself that that's something that I wanted to do at around the midpoint of the year. So I guess technically I have nine, eight that I'm using right now, one that's on deck. So there you have it. I don't know what you think about me now. Maybe you think I'm nuts. Maybe you think I'm now the girl with too much time on her hands and too many notebooks, but that's okay. My notebooks keep me organized. They make me feel like I'm in control. They make me feel like I'm creative and they just make me plain old happy. And remember, I don't write in each one of these every day. My notebooks are there to serve me, to serve my purposes, to serve my intentions, not the other way around. They are not there to overwhelm. They are there to support me. And honestly, I feel like each of my notebooks kind of has my back. (laughs) They're friends. I'm going to go ahead and post a picture of my notebook stack in the show notes, and I would love to see yours. Pull together your notebook stack for 2023, share it on your social media, tag me at Affinito Lit on pretty much any social media platform, or just go ahead and tell me about your stack in the show notes. If you are on Facebook, you can join my private Facebook group for the podcast, Get Literate, and you can go ahead and post pictures of your notebook stack there too. Now, later in the week, I'm going to hop on to a Facebook and Instagram live session so that I can actually show you what these look like. Listening to them is one thing, seeing them in the show notes is another, but actually getting to see me with them and open them and see the pages and just chat a little bit more about how they use them. That's what I'm really looking forward to. So be sure to grab that exact date and time in the show notes. I'll post it on social media as well, and we can have some fun discussing what our 2023 notebook stacks are. So that's it for me today. I hope I have your mind spinning with possibilities for notebooks. I hope you have a free spot in your calendar this week to go browse some notebooks that maybe you can make your own. And of course, I hope you spend some time not just reading this week, but writing too. I'll see you next week in the next episode. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Get Literate Podcast. You'll find links to all the books, resources, and ideas mentioned in the show notes and at alitlife.com. And if you want more, you might like to join my Patreon community. There, you'll find additional inspiration for your reading and writing lives, like bonus podcast episodes, book calendars, monthly book clubs, notebooking challenges, live events, giveaways, and much more. It's only $5 a month, and you get instant access to all the previous content, too. You can learn more at getliterate.co. But one more thing. If you love what you listen to today, please take a moment to rate and review the podcast or take a screenshot of the episode and text it to a friend. 
This helps the podcast grow and builds our bookish and notebookish community too. Thanks so much for listening.